Warning, this chapter contains adult content, so I will be recording that in a separate video for members only. Darling, you have just begun. By Dancing Lassie. Chapter 7. It's not until their first evening in Kermorin when Siri gives Yasker a kiss on the cheek and heads up to bed in her own room that Geralt realizes the opportunity he's been given. Yasker had turned up late morning, hair dripping wet, and had good-naturedly offered to help Cohen clear out and air a room with Siri. He then spent the rest of the day helping in the kitchen. He and Siri had dashed all over Kermorin that evening, Yasker creating a game out of trying to get from point A to point B with minimal detours and dead ends. Geralt had been sternly forbidden from helping them by the bard, though he had been favored with a soft smile and a lingering kiss. Their most enthusiastic discovery had been the natural hot springs housed in the basement of Kermorin. Siri had insisted on a proper bath straight away, putting an end to their exploring. Yasker had stood guard outside, ready to head off any of the witchers who might want a bath while the young princess was bathing. Geralt had joined him, feeling a small thrill at the ease with which Yasker reached for his hand and leaned against his side. Where were you this morning? Geralt had asked, playing with the fingers entangled with his own. I had to go down to the river. It's polite to check in with the local river deity if I'm going to be spending any length of time in that laboratory. Geralt then frowned slightly. I don't remember you doing that before. Yasker had shrugged. We were always on the move. Never really stayed anywhere long enough to make a big deal of my visit. Occasionally, I'd go have a drink with them while you completed a contract, but Mama and Old Father Potter are very relaxed about each other's children wandering into their laboratories. All the other major northern rivers respect Mama as well, so long as I didn't cause any trouble, I was free to go about as I pleased. He had drilled off, and Geralt had suppressed a wince as he remembered a certain incident on a mountain. One he would very much like to forget, one where Yasker had only been able to save him from being impaled by defacing another river's territory. Not such a free reign now, he'd hazarded a guess. No, Yasker had admitted. There's now a general unspoken agreement that I check in more often. Woke up this morning with an irresistible compulsion to go pay my respects. I should probably go see Uncle Moyna sometime soon, too, but it's Gwen's river I'm planning on staying here for several months, so she took precedence. Geralt had considered questioning him further, but Ciri had reappeared, and Yasker had been charmed by Vesemir into playing for them. Geralt needed to tell the older witcher to stop trying to butter up his partner. His uncharacteristic welcoming of a stranger into the keep was putting everyone else on edge. Yasker is going to be stuck with them for months. Vesemir will have plenty of time to conduct his inquisition. Still, the entertainment the bard has provided had gone over well, especially with Cohen, and he had wisely avoided his more moisturous wisdom melodies and stuck to his far less controversial nature balance. Geralt had been content to sit quietly by the fire, Siri pressed sleepily to his side, admiring the fine form of his river god. Now, he is acutely aware that this is the first time since he kissed Yasker in his own river, all the way back in Latinov, that they've been properly alone, with a bed, and a door that locks. And for the first time in many years, he's feeling a very peculiar sort of vulnerability. It's a feeling he thought he'd left behind in his youth after his first tentative patronage of a brothel. There have been many women and a few men he's bedded since, and he's not generally self-conscious about displaying his body. He knows his physique makes up for his scars, and the scars even attract a certain type. But none of these people meant anything. They weren't Yasker, who, it should be pointed out, has seen Geralt naked more often than anyone else he knows. So why does it feel so different now? Now that they're alone in Geralt's room in Kermorin. With the door that locks. Hey! Yasker's voice filters through his nervous inner monologue. The river god is in just his shirt and trousers, the fire that's been burning all day, keeping the room at a respectable temperature. He reaches out to tuck a fallen strand of Geralt's hair behind his ear and crowds in close. Upper to go right, he checks. Geralt lets out a shaky breath and nods before ducking his head to catch Yasker's mouth in a long, slow kiss. Mmm, Yasker hums his approval when they break apart and dives in for another, wrapping his arms around his witch's neck and pressing the entire length of his body against him. Personally, 
Jasper is of the opinion that cheek kisses are severely underrated. They're so versatile, appropriate in almost all situations. A quick brush of lips on the cheek when meeting a fond acquaintance, a slightly more loving peck for family, and for lovers. Well, the possibilities are endless. A quick, easy, socially acceptable display of affection, a reminder of feelings, a lingering promise of things to come. A kiss on the cheek can be so much more than just a kiss on the cheek. Yasker presses his lips to the soft skin just over Geralt's cheekbone, which sits safely above the slight scratchiness of stubble. He lets them rest there for just a moment before pulling back with a soft smacking sound and nuzzling his nose against Geralt's cheek. The witch's embarrassment at receiving such affection in front of his family is just an added bonus. Across the table, Lambert shoots them a disgusted look. Beside them, Siri gags at them theatrically in mock disgust. You two are gross, she complains through a mouthful of breakfast. Yasker considers half-heartedly scolding her for speaking with her mouthful, but he's too happy. Four months ago, he would never have believed the previous night could ever happen, not after the words they'd spat at each other at the end of the dragon hunt. Yup, he beams at her. So what's the plan for today? Winter preparations, Eskel informs him, eyeing the rather spectacular bruise he managed to leave on Geralt's throat the night before. Witcher healing means that leaving any lasting marks is rather difficult. Bruises tend to heal within a few hours. Yasker had diligently and repeatedly attended to that spot with his tongue and teeth to get the mark to stay. He likes seeing proof of himself on Geralt's skin. He fully intends to investigate that same spot again tonight. Got to stock up on wood supplies, clean the common rooms, and fix the walls. Geralt explains, self-consciously trying to tuck up his jacket to obscure the mic. He doesn't succeed. Yasker has made sure to leave it prominently right where his neck meets his remarkable jaw. I'm not sure how good we'll be at fixing walls, Yasker muses, shooting Siri a wink. But we can definitely help with the cleaning. It would be appreciated. Vesemir gives him a respectful nod from the head of the table. The old witcher still has a gleam in his eye, but he's toned down his more overt attempts to corner Yasker. Geralt had explained Vesemir's fascination with him when they were getting dressed that morning, and he's resigned himself to sitting down with the old witcher at some point in the near future and trying to put into words what he can't explain. If we work hard, Lambert will give Syria a sword lesson this afternoon. If there's still enough light after that, Eskel and Geralt will take her down the killer. Yasker barely hears Ciri's exclamation of joy as his head whoops around to stare in horror at Vasimir. Makula! He splutters with half a mind to drag Ciri away from this obviously deranged witcher. Sensing his panic, Geralt grabs his hand, squeezing it reassuringly. It's a nickname, Yasker. You know how dramatic young boys can be. It's a difficult trail that we use to increase stamina and improve movement. He turns to Siri, well aware that she doesn't like to be talked about and not included in the discussion. You'll learn how to improve your balance and judge difficult terrain, as well as increase your speed. Eskel and I will walk you with you today and explain how to deal with the tricky sections. That sounds brilliant! Siri enthuses, determined to strain Yasker's heart. She notices the wild look in his eyes. I'll be fine, Papa. Geralt will be there to keep me safe. Yasker doesn't like it. If he had his way, then Ciri would never need to pick up a sword. She'd never have to fight for her life. But if Ledenhove had taught him anything, it was that he can't rely on himself alone to keep Ciri safe. Knowing how to fight and defend herself will help her keep herself safe and allow her some independence. And for some odd reason, Ciri wants to learn how to fight. She's interested in swords and terrifying paths that previous generations of potential witnesses have nicknamed the killer. Doesn't mean he has to like it. He lets Geralt go off with his brothers and Cohen after breakfast, before dragging Ciri to the kitchen to give it a proper scrub. She grumbles throughout as he sets her to scouring pans that look as if they've been collecting dirt for decades. But once he's organized the kitchen to his satisfaction and helped her put away the ironware, he entertains her by throwing a bucket of soapy water over the floor. They sit cross-legged on the sturdy wooden table and watch as he makes it crash like waves over the stone, sweeping up all the dirt before he forces it out into the courtyard, leaving a near spotless floor drying in its wake. How long are you finding everything? He gives her a little nudge as she slumps against him. He's been wanting to talk to her on her own, to check in on her without an audience. She chews her lip thoughtfully, eyes fixed on the gleaming floor. All right, I guess. You guess? She shrugs. I'm looking forward to learning how to use a sword. Grandmother and grandfather always promised to teach me, but they were always too busy. 
Her mouth turns down slightly with familiar sadness at the thought of her grandparents, and Yasker wraps a comforting arm around her in silent support. And I really like Cohen. He's very friendly, and he says he'll teach me how to play chess. The others are a bit scary, though. Yasker thinks of Lambert's brashness, Eskel's silent inspections, and Vesemir's intimidating seniority. He can see why she thinks so, but he doesn't know what he can do to help. Geralt is the one who knows these men, and none apart from Vesemir seem all that fond of their river god guest. Do you want me to join you for your lesson with Lambert? He's by no means a sword expert, but Trava had ensured he knew the basics. When in doubt, make sure you hit your enemy with a sharp end. Siri considers this carefully, twisting a lock of hair around her fingers. No, she decides. I don't think he'll respect me if I don't face him on my own. It's the kind of thinking that you learn in a royal court, and Yasker wishes with all his heart that Siri could unlearn it. Let herself believe that he is strong enough to hold them both above water. Oh, you should. I could just hide in a corner and be ready to jump in. He giggles, but he's completely serious. You do it. No, I'm almost 13. I'll be fine. Gods, she's almost 13. How in mama's name did that happen? He'd only looked away for a moment, then she was almost a teenager. Weren't there rules about this sort of thing? Can he just ban her from growing up? Ina, he knows, spent almost 20 years being 10 before she let herself start to age. Could Siri not do the same for his sake? Papa? She peers up at him with large green eyes, oblivious to his internal crisis. Do you think Ike's all right? Will he be managing by himself? He'll be fine. Yasker assures. I'll let Boxer in charge. He'll look after him. Papa! Siri's unimpressed by his attempt at humor. The truth is he's a little concerned about his acolyte. He doesn't think any hostile force could gain entry into his house, but Ike does like to take frequent trips up and down the Pankrats, rescuing animals and keeping the peace. He hopes no Nilfgaardian or any other suspicious character is bold enough to attempt to attack him on one of his trips. Yasker has asked his siblings to keep an eye on Ike for him. He's a good fighter, Yasker tries again, and he's not going to go out of his way to attract a confrontation. I miss him, Siri admits, and I miss Lettenhove. It was nice to have a home again. It will always be your home, for as long as you want, Yasker promises, pressing a teary kiss to the top of her head.